Hi, welcome again to our next video. Today we will study about a few of the hydraulic elements involved in uh, hydraulics. So we will start with an hydraulic pump. So the hydraulic pump is used to convert the mechanical energy from the prime movers, uh, especially like engine or electric motor, into hydraulic pressure energy. So hydraulic pressure energy will be used to power the hydraulic applications okay the pressure energy is used to operate the actuators so the principle used behind the hydraulic pumps so uh, the pumps will push on the hydraulic fluid and create a flow and uh, they operate based on a displacement principle so meaning they will, the energy it will be moved from one place one point to another point so fluid is taken in and displaced to another point okay the pump the hydraulic pump are classified into two categories okay the first one uh, is called non positive displacement and the second one is called positive displacement so in this slide we will see what are the difference between these two okay we will see first the non positive displacement pump uh, the non positive displacement pump are a very common hydraulic pump use so the pump uh, discharge uh, liquid into in a continuous flow so meaning uh, if you see the picture here so the fluid is coming in and you will have a propeller or impeller to change the direction and uh, send it to another place so by creating this flow the pressure will be increased and it will be sent to a various part of uh, hydraulic elements Okay, so it uses the impeller or propeller to move fluid by momentum. So some of the examples are centrifugal pump, propeller pump uh, used in coolant pump, or water pump on the radiator cool engine. Okay, we will see the second type, which is the positive displacement pump. So this is a pump that causes a liquid to move by trapping a fixed amount of fluid and then forcing displacing the trap volume into the discharge pump so meaning so it will take and keep trap a fixed amount then it will pump to that particular place so meaning it will keep first then it will send it is not like the non-positive displacement type where it will just take the input and it will channel it to another place so the there are three types of positive displacement hydraulic pumps involved. The first one is the geared pump, then we have a wind pump, and we have a piston type pump. First, we will see wind type of pump. So, uh, the, in the wind pump, so the rotor has a permanent offset uh, so that when it turns, the so speed space between the wind. So, you can see uh, you have a space. So, compared to this, so this is a smaller space and this is a bigger space uh, and uh, this space can change from larger then smaller and it can become larger again okay when the space getting larger especially like in this setup so oil is drawn in so oil will be entering this space and when the space is getting smaller oil is pushed up Okay, so uh, the oil will enter at this uh, port S and it will go at port P. Okay, then we have a second type of pump, so which we call it as a radial piston pump. So you can see the numbering here. So you have one, two, three, uh, until we have nine. Then you have S and P. So you can follow this. Uh, this uh, numbering so the cam 2 so cam 2 is here is a part of the main shaft so you have a main shaft here and when it rotates the piston are made to reciprocate inside cylinder 4 okay, you have a cylinder 4 here cylinder inside okay which lay on the radial line so you have a radial line here okay when the piston move inward okay the piston can move uh, inward and outward Okay, when the piston moves inward, the space in the cylinder fills with oil through the suction valve. So you have suction valve here. 
so the oil will move inside okay move inside and when the piston moves outside oil is trapped inside and forced out at the pressure port p so you have pressure port p so you have uh, three pistons here uh, in this example so all these three pistons can take uh, take and keep that particular oil before send it out okay that is a radial piston pump and we have a third type which is a gear pump so you can see you have uh, two gear and it's a mesh at this particular place and you have a inlet s and also outlet p so uh, you can see all this numbering okay the so input shaft 3 so you have a input shaft here so it will be used to rotate the driving gear so driving gear 7 so this is the driving gear so when it rotates okay let's say this rotate clockwise so the other idler or idler gear will rotate in the opposite direction okay oil from the suction port okay as we have oil entering here so it will uh, come fill between the gears okay the space between the gear and it will be uh, sent to pressure port p so meaning in this example the oil will be kept in between the gears okay the gear mesh and form a barrier so that oil is passed out okay so it will when it enters to this region it will push the oil out okay that is how three types of positive displacement pump are working so the, all these uh, positive displacement pump have uh, its own advantages so you can see the listing here so i have highlighted so they can operate at a very high pressure so it can go up to 800 bar by uh, 800 bar compared to the other types of pump and uh, they, they have a high volumetric efficiency and uh, the efficiency can go up to 98 percent so meaning it is very uh, it it is having a very good uh, efficiency and they are highly efficient and almost constant uh, throughout the pressure range okay so let's say you want uh, the flow to be in that particular pressure so it will constantly and efficiently give the pressure range that you wanted okay and they have a high power to weight ratio uh, so they are a compact unit okay and they can obtain a smooth and precisely controlled motion so meaning it is more stable in terms of motion motion by proper application and control they produce only the amount of flow required to move the load at the desired velocity so meaning uh, uh, using this positive displacement pump you can even control the velocity of the flow okay so that is uh, some of the advantages of the positive displacement pump and uh, lastly so they can be used for wide range of pressures and speed so they will provide a very great flexibility in terms of performance okay there uh, we, we will see the next element so which is the hydraulic oil Okay, hydraulic oil is a very important part of hydraulic system because the choosing of oil uh, is uh, very important uh, because it, it is carrying some primary tasks at the same time they are carrying some secondary tasks in the hydraulic system okay if you see the primary tasks so for primary tasks they are used for power transmission the pressure and also motion transmission and they are sending the signal transmission for control and for the secondary task since uh, it is uh, oil based uh, substance so they are used for lubricating the rotating and translating components to avoid frictions and wear okay so it transport away from the location of heat generation and uh, it will be dissolved uh, in the reservoir okay and uh, they can transport the particles to the filter okay so to be filtered out and they have, they have the protection of surface from chemical attack especially corrosion because if you don't have all so corrosion will start to take place okay 
some of the hydraulic fluid requirements so as an engineer when you are choosing hydraulic fluid so you need to check all these uh, requirements before choosing okay the first first is obviously the functional functionality of the hydraulic fluid so it must have a groove replication characteristic so viscosity must not depend strongly on the temperature and pressure so it must be independent so you can it must have a good heat conductivity so meaning if it don't have a heat conductivity so meaning um, the fire can happen so low heat expansion coefficient so you can calculate this so this will be provided by the manufacturers and large elasticity modulus okay so all these are some of the requirement in terms of functionality okay in the economic requirement so it must be a low or affordable price uh, if not your system will uh, will have a very high maintenance cost so which will be troublesome and it must have a slow aging and thermal and chemical stability in long life cycle so you, you shouldn't be expiring at a very uh, fast rate so but it must be durable for certain years okay in order to provide uh, economic advantage for you okay then the the next one is on in terms of safety so it must have a high flash point uh, or in certain cases not inflammable at all because if your hydraulic oil can, has a very low flash point fire can happen easily okay so you need to make sure all these aspects are taken care of and chemically neut neutral okay so especially against a material or person who touching them uh, so they shouldn't get uh, chemically attacked attack by the uh, fluid okay and it must have a low air dissolving cap capability in order to avoid foam formation because foam can de destroy or can uh, can cause uh, your elements the hydraulic elements to malfunction okay so in all these in terms of safety and in terms of environmental so you need to make sure that it is not harmful for the environment and it don't have a toxic some of the other properties that you can look into the hydraulic fluid so you can check all these elements i will explain all these elements uh, one by one okay the next slide okay so first we will see so your hydraulic oil must have a good lubricity okay uh, the components of hydraulic system contain many surfaces so which are in close contact and which move in relation to each other so you need to your oil must give a good protection against wear and tear okay so in so in terms of in between the materials so it must blend well and it must pro provide good lubricity okay the second one is on the heat dissipation it must carry it away from the uh, working part and uh, once uh, all the heat element is that generate heat is uh, transferred to the reservoir it will be dissolved so the fluid must carry the generator heat away and readily dissipate it to the atmosphere or to the coolers okay so the high thermal conductivity and high specific heat values are desirable in the fluid choice okay. so the next point is the flash point so like how i say earlier so flash point is a uh, is known as uh, temperature at which flashes will be generated so meaning uh, to simply say this uh, temp flash point is the temperature where the fire starts okay when the oil is brought into contact with any heated matter okay so we know so all three elements of that uh, involved in fire must present 
so if we there's a low uh, low uh, flash point so meaning it's easier for all the elements to come together so for fire we need oxygen we need fuel and also we need heated material okay so having low flash point will not be an advantage okay low flash point oil are not used as hydraulic oil okay so you can uh, read some notes here uh, related to flash point uh, then the next one is the low foaming tendency uh, so uh, the when the fluid is when the hydraulic fluid is under high pressure so you can generate air bubbles okay inside the hydraulic fluid okay when this fluid is depressurized okay meaning uh, at the different point of your hydraulic system so if the there is a pressure drop this air bubble will expand and produce foams okay foams and uh, because of its compressibility and poor lubricating properties foam can seriously affect the operation and lubrication of the machinery so meaning parts can get spoiled and uh, it can pro uh, it can produce corrosion okay so you need to have a proper foam inhibitors in your system to bring the foam to the surface uh, so to modify the surface tension of the air so that they can break up easily okay all the molecules or the foam will be uh, dissolved okay so you need to take this into consideration then the next point is here on the fire resistor so obviously since it's involving oil so fire can easily happen especially when the flash point is lower so it must be having a good fire resistance uh, so in in order to avoid fire even of fire okay commonly used hydraulic liquid or petroleum derivatives so many produced from the petroleum and they can uh, burn vigorously once they pass the flash point okay so uh, we also can consider artificial and also synthetic hydraulic fluid okay so which can provide high fire resistance so obviously when you are involving artificial and synthetic hydraulic fluid it will be expensive than the the one that we are using based on petroleum derivative okay so uh, you need to take consider consideration about this and the next point will be stable viscosity characteristic okay viscosity is a uh, is a measure of hydraulic fluids so assistant to flow okay we we need to check whether the viscosity of the hydraulic fluid or the hydraulic oil is stable or not because when the hydraulic oil is too thin so meaning is uh, having a low viscosity it will not seal sufficiently uh, so it lead to leakage and wear of part so meaning is not sufficiently lubricating the required part and when contradictly when the hydraulic oil is too thick uh, meaning is having a high viscosity the fluid will be more difficult to be pumped to various part of the system okay and it may reduce operating efficiency okay all these things you need to take into consideration okay all hydraulic fluid must be able to retain optimum viscosity so it shouldn't be too high or, or too, too low so it must be in the required level throughout the operation okay and the next one is uh, prevent rust formation okay, in many system water can enter as condensation or contamination and it can mix up with hydraulic oil okay so we know water droplets can cause rusting okay rusting of the hydraulic component especially something that uh, related to iron okay and uh, water also can react with some additive okay especially a chemical based uh, substance uh, and it can be aggressive to yellow metals okay so yellow metals uh, we always there there are many yellow metals you can uh, search for that uh, example of yellow metal is uh, brass 
Okay, brush. Okay, so it, it will cause an aggressive reaction with a yellow metal. Okay, uh, so hydraulic oil formation contains rust and corrosion, and you need to have a proper lubrication in order to avoid this. Okay. Okay, so the next one is a uh, non-toxic, easy to handle and available. Okay, so because when you are having a uh, missionaries and uh, bigger equipment, so you always will have a technician to take care of the maintenance. Okay, so all the oil or the fluid that comes out from the machine must not be uh, toxic and uh, it's not harmful for the people who repair, handle or use or pay so it's for the technician for the users so for all the people that interacting with the machine so it must be safe to for them and it must be cheap as possible okay not too cheap uh, not too cheap that uh, affect the quality but it must be cost effective in order to be used by the company okay so that that uh, Few characteristic that you look into when you are dealing with hydraulic oil. So then we move to the next sub point, uh, sub topic, uh, which is the accumulator. So hydraulic accumulator is an accessory of the hydraulic system. Uh, it become a pressure storage reservoir, which is a non-compressible hydraulic fluid is held under pressure by an external source okay so accumulator is a uh, like your, your reservoir or tank in your pneumatic so where you keep your oil under pressure okay so the external source uh, that giving you the pressure can be from a mechanical like spring a raised weight or compressed gas so all these elements can be used to to cause pressure to the uh, to the, the particular hydraulic oil okay so the accumulator enables the hydraulic system to cope with extreme of demand okay using a less powerful pump to respond more quickly to a temporary demand and to smooth out pulsation okay this is uh, exactly similar like the reservoir in pneumatic okay so in case of uh, extreme demand so it can it no need to uh, get a new supply it already have the supply available pressurized and ready to be sent to the production okay and it can smooth out pulsation so pulsation is sudden shock a sudden spike in your system okay so it is a type of energy storage device okay so there are various type of hydraulic accumulators Okay, the common common one is a weighted weighted accumulator, spring loaded accumulator, and also gas charge accumulator. And uh, the oldest type of accumulator and the common method that we use in the industry will be uh, from a weight loaded type accumulator. Okay, this is the oldest type of accumulator. It consists of vertical heavy steel cylinder which incorporates a piston with packing to prevent leakage. Okay, and you put a dead weight uh, on top of the piston to create. So it's actually using the force of gravity in order to create a potential energy in the accumulator. When you have a potential energy, so the pressure will be increased. Just the disadvantage of this accumulator is uh, its large size and heavy weight, which makes it unsuitable for uh, mobile equipment or mobile uh, hydraulic system. Okay, so these are some of the points related to weight loaded type accumulator. Okay, so you can see here. Okay, this is a weight loaded type accumulator. So meaning you have a weights on top of this piston and you have a oil here okay so uh, when the deep weight is placed on top of the platform so it will create uh, because of the gravity it will create a force downward 
and this oil will be pressurized because the surface will be limited so when the surface is limited and the container is closed so it will create a pressurized uh, hydraulic oil okay inside it okay and the another type uh, of accumulator is actually similar like the weight loaded type just instead of you using a dead weight you are using a spring so spring is a mechanical way of generating a potential energy okay and thus it will create a pressure inside here so you have an oil reservoir here and you have a spring and you have a piston okay a piston is preloaded with spring spring and the spring will make sure that the oil in this oil reservoir will constantly be pressurized okay and the third type we are using gas charge accumulator so meaning you are using a gas to create to expand or uh, a spring in order to pro provide uh, pressure okay so we have uh, three types so we have a bladder type we have a piston type and we have a diaphragm type and the commonly used or uh, the popular one is the bladder type and uh, the bladder type has a gas compression ratio around 14 to 1 okay in order to uh, produce produce the pressure. so you can see here in this picture so we have uh, this is the bladder type okay so you, this uh, blue color here uh, inside here is the gas you can see it's a gas so when it expand when it expand so it will produce uh, pro produce it will limit the space in order to provide uh, more uh, pressure for the hydraulic so you can see here you have a piston so when the gas is uh, filled here so the piston will move and limit the uh, area so uh, it will limit the volume volume of the container uh, for the hydraulic so this particular gas charge accumulator will be connected to the storage tank okay so storage place okay in order to uh, to limit the volume okay by limiting the volume the pressure will be maintained okay so these are some of the advantages of hydraulic system so it uses a incompressible fluid okay, which result in high accuracy so contradict to the pneumatic where it uses a compressed uh, air and it has a lesser efficiency so it delivers consistent power output okay so which is difficult in pneumatic or mechanical type system okay so hydraulic system employ high density the possibility of leakage is less uh, because it using a thick uh, transmission line uh, or keep or what or pipes okay in order to uh, hold the hydraulic oil and the leakage is less uh, and the maintenance cost is less compared to uh, other system and the system perform well in hot environment so even though it is a uh, fire prone but when you have a proper safety element so it is perform well in hot environment condition okay in terms of uh, disadvantage of hydraulic system so uh, you can see the piston or the cylinders can be corroded with the hydraulic fluid so meaning if the hydraulic fluid is uh, less uh, less viscosity having a less viscosity it can cause corrosion to still happen so you need to be very careful when you are selecting the materials and also hydraulic fluid and uh, it's uh, unsuitable for smaller in instrument because the system and the weight will be larger okay so it is uh, more suitable for larger system okay and small impurities in the hydraulic fluid can permanently damage the complete system so you need to uh, invest in having a suitable filter to be installed and leakage also can be a critical issue uh, and you need to uh, have a proper prevention method uh, or seals uh, in order to avoid 
all this leakage and obviously when you have leakage it can harmful for the environment so meaning hydraulic system is very powerful in terms of force and all the other uh, advantages but provided you need to take a proper precautions and also uh, preventions okay so with that i will conclude today's video so we will see you next week